to Gunpai News. Why did Zeno have his headset spiked down? <laughs> no, no, I spun around and it actually flipped down. It fell down as he did, yeah. As he flipped down. Zeno has poor mind control. I have crippling depression. Oh, I'd rather my poor mind control. <laughs> um, welcome everyone to Kampai News for the week commencing the 7th of April 2024. I'm your host, Nazareth. I am joined by slightly tipsy Thalian and Zeno. How are you boys? Slightly. Slightly. He's had some sober up time. No, no, he slightly hasn't. more than usual. <laughs> He's peed out all the soberness and all that's left <laughs> is, um, what's it called? Drunkers. Yeah. Pain. <laughs> Right. Uh, speaking of pain, let's let's bring it down a little because we, as always, we front loaded the news with our yes. bad stories, so we can get them out of the way. Uh, starting with remembering a legendary voice actor, Bon Ishihara, passes away at sixty-eight. Renowned voice actor Bon Ishihara, real name Sumio Ishihara, known for his iconic roles in anime such as the Gold Tooth Doctor in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Johnny V Matagi in Samurai Champloo. Soichiro Shimogamo in The Eccentric Family, uh, Alexandra Bukhok in The Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Die Nui... Die... Die... Die Nui These. I think it's Die Nui These. Die Noia Thise. Die Noia Thise, okay. Uh, it's it's more German. German, yeah, I figured. Uh, and Kenichi Yamam Yamamoto from Shingu, The Secret of the Sailor Wars, has passed away on February 8th at the age of 68. Uh, I'm surprised the news is just getting out. Um, a funeral service was held privately for relatives, marking the end of an era for fans and colleagues alike who admired his work and contribution to the anime industry. I don't remember the Golden Tooth mm. Doctor. Granted, it's been years since I've watched Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! He's the he's the eccentric nut job that um, it made like all the armor uh, soul bonds and. Uh, he makes all the um, alchemists, uh, sorry, the philosopher stones. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Staying on the uh, unfortunate side of things, as a farewell to a versatile voice, William Samples passed away. Canadian voice actor William Samples, known for his roles in anime such as Master Keaton and Inuyasha, died on January 2nd, as reported by The Globe and Mail, on March 9th. Samples, who voiced Taihei Hiraga in both the Master Keaton in both the Master Keaton series and its OVA also contributed his voice to Project Arms, the second chapter, among other roles. Beyond anime, he was involved in various acting projects, including appearances in To All the Boys, P.S. I Still Love You, Supernatural, and Battlestar Galactica. There you go. So this is another one where they've where these had a private funeral and then announced a month or so later. Jeez. One of the uh, one of the American uh, contributors, or not American? Mm. Sorry, Western Canadian. Western contributors. Uh, tax evasion charges for the Apothecary Diaries manga. Sorry, manga creator Neko Kuka. Sorry, Neku Neko Kurage. Um, real name Eric uh, Ikada, uh, known for their work on the Apothecary Diaries manga, faces um, indictment. Is that how you spell indictment? Yep, that is how you spell indictment. Wow. Um, by the Fukuoka Regional Taxation Bureau for allegedly evading about 47 million yen, or about 310 US dollars. Sorry, 310,000 <laughs> US dollars. Sorry. <laughs> wow, the yen's um, really fallen. <laughs> yeah, uh, in taxes from 2019 to 2021. The charges involve unreported incomes of approximately 260 million yen, um, which comes to about 1.7 million US dollars um, from manga sales uh, purport purportedly? purportedly. Yeah. Yes. Purportedly. Okay. Okay. Spent uh, on real estate. Oh, so basically like homes and shit like that. Yeah. Neko Kurage uh, claims the oversight was due to ignorance and has since settled the unpaid taxes and fees in 2022 after receiving guidance from the tax office. They also sought a tax accountant's help for future tax filings, emphasizing that the issue does not involve the light novel's original author or other collaborators. And Well, if... 
if they've already settled, why are they facing indictment? I'm not sure. Maybe mm, they did face indictment. No, but, uh, uh, this is the. I think this is going to be the thing that uh, yes, they've settled the unpaid taxes, but they still committed a crime, so right. they do have to be charged for that. Um, huh. So All the right. taxes. That's just step one of multiple. Yeah. Is actually pay the money you owe. I mean, fair, it's it's fair, like but usually settlements it, are like okay, we're not going to do this. Take us to court now. Well, I mean, yeah. it's quite possible no. that they're going to um, avoid it, but at the same time, it's a lot of money that's been um, yes. neglected. And For sure, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, But the thing is, like, you know, taxes and stuff like that is so difficult to keep on top of, right? And, well, I'm, you know, I'm... In the West, we don't know, we don't necessarily know how they do it in Japan. Um, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I can't it's... imagine it's it's going to be too different and things like that. You'll still need someone to realistically be like full time on this stuff, right? Well, I've yeah. When you're making with... when you're making that much money, you should really have an accountant. Cracking down on sharing. Disney Plus to enforce new password policies. Fuck off. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger announced that the company will begin in, uh, enforcing password sharing restrictions on its streaming service, Disney Plus, starting in June. This initiative will kick off in a few countries before the, a more extensive rollout in September. The move, aimed at curbing the sharing of account passwords, will prompt users borrowing passwords to establish their own subscriptions. And it's just the, the Netflix thing again. Uh, mm. Later in the year, Disney Plus intends to offer an option for account holders to add individuals from outside their household for an additional fee. This policy update follows adjustments in the terms of service for both Disney Plus and Hulu earlier this year, signifying a broader industry trend led by Netflix, which initiated a similar restriction in several countries throughout 2023. Uh, like, on the one hand, I get it, but also, like, if we were all living in the same place and watching on three accounts, how is that really different than watching from three different states no but like here's here's the big thing right mm. like th they are they are inciting another mass exodus to piracy because oh, yeah, like of how many how many fucking platforms are there now right amazon netflix disney um apple well, disney probably got something Yes, Apple does. Apple TV, Disney, Hulu, right. and HBO are all all under the same umbrella now. So at least that's does, been consolidated a little bit. But uh, right, does does um oh crap, what's the the Warner Discovery? Do they have their own platform? I don't I do. know, but we know that CBS how uh, CBS does. What CBS? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, CBS All Paramount? Access. Or Paramount All Access, right. yeah, Paramount All Access. Yeah, so Paramount. So exactly. that's five. That's five sodding uh, platforms as it is, right? Like, I'm sorry, I'm not fucking made of money for these streaming platforms. Oh, yeah. It's gonna go back to the right? cable, mm. uh, the cable model where you pay like seventy bucks a month or ninety bucks a month exactly. or something. It's it's yeah, and it's like so it's, stupid. It's just inciting yet yeah, more and more piracy, the and it's just like you know, thing. fucking. Netflix could have been the goose that laid the golden eggs. Instead, they've just kind of killed it and taken all the golden eggs elsewhere. Oh. So they're never going to get any more. They're just going. They're just well, trying to squeeze every. Part of the problem they is just that Netflix used to have Netflix used to have everything, and then these other companies were like, "Well, we yeah. want to lean on that." And so then they had to start creating mm. content to fill the space because everyone moved off of Netflix. So Netflix had to start yeah. making stuff to fill their space, and these other companies had to make stuff to fill their space, and a lot of it yeah. ended up just being crap that wasted money. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Exactly. You know, millions of dollars on episodes of, um, you know, Star Wars shows that are just, like, subpar at best. Exactly. You know? If they all just had to go to the same platform, they wouldn't bother because they'd get paid for the work they... they Even they, just they, two. The I, I, would, I, would, I would say two is good because then you have competition, but... Yeah. yeah. Farewell, Phantom of the Kill. After nine years, the beloved strategy drama RPG Phantom of the Kill will end its service on May 27th. Uh, launched in 2015 in Japan across multiple platforms, the game featured characters named after legendary weapons and offered a mix of character collection and tactical turn-based battles. Its global version had previously ceased in 2018. The announcement, which also marks the end of premium currency sales, comes with a refund window for unused currency extending from May 28th to August 27th. Additionally, Phantom of the Kill had expanded its universe with a concept anime short film, a light novel, and various franchise crossovers, demonstrating its rich narrative and engaging gameplay. 
I've never heard of this. No. No, this neither. Is, well, I well, mean, no, because it, uh, the, the Western service ended in 2018. Yeah, so. but, yeah. but mm. they've also made uh, animes and stuff. They said. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, well. A concept and a short film. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. So the. Uh, Wait, what is this? Even the then, Phantom of the Kill alternative li imitation blockchain game launched on March 5th. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, well, we know what's going on there. <laughs> exactly. That's that's why they're closing this because they've lost all their money from the blockchain. Oh, ridiculous. Dear. Crunchyroll's spring premiere mishap. Ahead of their scheduled premiere, episodes from Crunchyroll's eagerly awaited spring anime lineup, including titles like Sound, um, Euphorium Euphonium. 3. Euphonium. Euphonium? Damn it, yeah. that's so close. Mm -hmm. Euphonium 3. Yeah, and Konosuba, uh, the god's a blessing on this wonderful world 3 have been leaked online the leaks affect multiple series slated for the spring season prompting Crunchyroll to initiate an investigation into the source interestingly some of the leaked uh, anime had already been showcased in early screenings at events like a uh, sakura con and puerto rico comic con Hitting at a possible connection, sorry, hinting, hinting at a possible connection. With an, uh, the official air dates of these animes just around the corner, Crunchyroll's efforts to address and mitigate the impact of these leaks are underway. Honestly, honestly, I oh, don't yes. think they're going to do, I do not think they're going to do any investigation whatsoever. I think it's a case of plug up the hole, let's move on. It's almost certainly that it leaked from these these events. Mm -hmm. um, but look at this. You've got, uh, so along with that, we've got Chilling in Another World with level two super cheap powers, unnamed memory, yeah. God's game we play, games we play, the banished former hero lives in the, uh, as he pleases, and re as a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. Oh, and Astronaut. Uh, Astronaut as well. Which I was kind of interested in, but oh. I'll actually watch. Yamato's Journey Beyond the Stars, a 50th anniversary celebration. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the iconic spaceship battlesh or space battleship Yamato anime, Hideaki Yano is set to plan and produce a special project comprising book publications, a screening event, and exhibitions across Japan. Scheduled for October 6th, the screening event coincides with the anime's original air date of in 1974, honoring the legacy of creators Yoshinobu Nishizaki and Leiji uh, Matsumoto. Because uh, everyone knows the Leiji verse. Uh, the project will feature an art book by Michio Murakawa, a design artwork book by Junichiro uh, Tamamori, and a commemorative edition titled Spaceship, Space Battleship Yamato 1974 Complete Works, among other manga publications. Ano, known for his work on Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, and being a longtime fan of Yamato, aims to celebrate the, the profound impact the series has had on him and the anime industry. So interestingly, he's just kind of host. He's just kind of lend lending his name to all this. He's not actually making anything, it seems. Um, you know that this means mm -hmm. that Space Battleship Yamato is going to end up in the um, uh, Shin universe, right? So it's, yes, it's, yes, of course, know, the, yeah, hundred percent. The the that that model of Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, Evangelion, and Shin Kamen Rider. That's going to end up having Spaceship Yamato just like, you know, just shoved yep, in there somewhere. Yep, yep. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I'm going to have I look forward 100%. to it. <laughs> uh, he's been a fan of the franchise for 49 years since his second year in middle school. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, that's a franchise, isn't it? 49 Doesn't years. Doesn't think he'd be the same person he is today without the franchise. That's really cool, though. I'm, I'm happy for him. Live action Thus Spoke Kishibi Rohan gains new episode this May. NHK has announced the airing of a new episode for the live action series based on Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan, a spin off of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, on May 5th on BS Premium 4K and May 10th on NHK General. This marks the series' ninth episode and will adapt the poaching seashore story. Issei Takahashi returns as Rohan alongside Mari Iito, uh, Iitoyo as its editor, uh, Kyoka Izumi. The series, which expands on Hirohiko Araki's manga universe, has been well received with previous episodes and a film adaptation contributing to its popularity. Why do I have to read so many names? When did it go on? December well, is apparently when it went on. 
hiatus. This has had really weird part, like release schedules. The first three episodes were in December 2020. And then three, three more episodes were in December. Well. Yeah. And then the next three episodes were in December 2021 for three consecutive nights. And and now it's back in May of this year? No. There must have been a couple more because that's only there's yeah, it's, it's gotta be more. Yeah. Anyway, so, that's again, interesting. Do you, do you remember though that Sorry. Japan only uh, really lifted their COVID restrictions in October of twenty two? True. Good point. Yeah. So like God knows what kind of problems that they would have had for production. Uh, and things like that. I mean, there's probably like, you know, oh yeah, but you follow these guidelines and you're fine, but... You I know. wonder if anyway. they can actually pull off JoJo-style stuff. I mean, I know that this has a different tone to it, but I wonder if they can pull off JoJo-style stuff in live action. It'd be interesting to see. Who knows? Well, there, there is a uh, a live action uh, part four. Is there? Yeah, there is. There's oh my gosh. There is. Right, so moving on. Blue Period Manga steps into live action this summer. The popular manga Blue Period, created by Subasa Yama, uh, Yamaguchi, is set to receive a live-action film adaptation premiering on August 9th. The announcement was made by Warner Bros. Japan, um, which also released a trailer, a uh, teaser trailer, stirring excitement among fans. The film, directed by Kentaro Hagiwara. Uh, of the live-action Tokyo Ghoul fame, stars uh, Gordon Maida. 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 Uh, as uh, Yota. Sorry, Yotaro. Sorry, no, that's Yotara. Uh, Yaguchi. Yatara. Yaguchi. Uh, alongside Fumiya Takahashi. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rihito Itagaki and Hiori Sak Sakurada. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I miss some of the names? Oh. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, in supporting roles, sorry, the the phonetic spellings are like making it hard to find the right. Oh, uh, with nice. Reiko Yoshida. Um, penning the script and music by Yuki um, Yuki, Yuki Yaffle <laughs> Kojima um, the uh, film promises to uh, bring the manga's artistic and emotional depth to the big screen Blue Period has received numerous accolades including the 13th manga Tai Show Awards in 2020 and has inspired both an anime series and and a stage play. Did not know about the stage play. That how's that look? So, Does it look, look pretty good? Oh, oh shit! Sorry, I just realised what this is. This is Blue Period. I thought this was um, yeah the yeah no. So I thought this uh, no. shit was it Blue Lock? Blue Exorcist. I thought this, oh no 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 the 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 football one. The so football I, one. Blue, I wasn't blue watching any of this. Can we can we can we flick through this at all? That's a so great got, uh, face. I think that's him getting accepted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's his, and then here's this his is first. him discovering the power of the art. This is not his. Yeah. This is one of his um, seniors, that, oh. and he's just absolutely infatuated with what she's done with the the paint and everything. Because oh, um, it's like he got inspired by oh shit, um, is it uh, Picasso's Blue Period? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, this looks pretty damn good, to be fair. Um, I'm actually quite interested in seeing this. I know how much you uh, love the anime, so that's why I tried to give yeah, this one to I, you. <laughs> yeah, I do like this 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 artsy sort of um, side of life. So, And I think this one will probably translate well to live action, because it's not like super yeah. out yes. of yeah, this world yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Monster Hunter's permanent retreat in Osaka. The highly anticipated permanent Monster Bar West Cafe, in collaboration between Capcom and Pacella, has officially opened its doors in Osaka's Namba District as of March 1st, marking a significant addition to the Monster Hunter franchise's presence. Unlike its pop-up predecessors, which I think we've talked about before, this cafe mm. offers a unique point-based reward system where for every 1,000 yen, or about every 660, 
uh, US, spent uh, patrons earn points redeemable for exclusive merchandise. Alongside the rewards, the cafe boasts a variety of themed foods and drinks, including some exclusive to this location. Uh, I thought that sense was going to go on longer. It's situated in the same building as the Final Fantasy XIV Eorzea Cafe in one of Osaka's tourist hotspots, Dotonbori, making reservations highly recommended despite not being required. So, Zeno, when you go back to Japan, mm. you stopping in Osaka? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! Food? That's look at that. It's like the uh, it's like the quest board. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, so uh, a mate of mine uh, went to the restaurant that I think it's in Tokyo. Oh, the arm and you can actually yeah, order. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can actually order like the 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 meowscular chef buffet sort of thing, but oh. you have to pre-order oh. it in advance. Oh. Dear God, that's massive. Damn. 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 Yes. Oh. oh Let's go back <laughs> up to that one. Seriously. Oh my God. The cat <laughs> no, no, scroll back uh, up to that sword. Scroll back up to that that that, that, that one. one. Look yeah. at that. That's a great sword. That's so oh. You see, the big thing is, like, a lot of these places, you think, oh, because it's like a pop-up uh, cafe, uh, sorry, restaurant. It's a themed restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah, Most yeah. Most of yeah. the time, you're just like, oh, the food. oh god. Yep. Yeah. You Yum. think just, oh, my God, it's not going to be that good, so on and so forth. We went to one, um, which was a Square Enix one for Octopath um, Legacy <laughs> 2, mm -hmm. right? It The food was so goddamn good. I was just like, I, I was not expecting it to be this good quality. Chun Li's Bronze Tribute in Capcom's Cradle. In celebration of the enduring legacy of the Street Fighter franchise, a bronze statue of the iconic character Chun Li was unveiled in Kashihara City, Nara Prefecture, the birthplace of Capcom's founder. This event marks a significant addition to the city's attractions as Chun Li takes her place alongside a previously erected Ryu statue. Funded through crowdfunding, the project amassed nearly 5.5 million yen, or about 37,000 US dollars, to bring this vision to life. The unveiling was part of a broader celebration that includes Street Fighter themed manhole covers, a gaming corner, and original merchandise giveaways. Additionally, the local school district has embraced the theme, offering collaboration lunches, including a Chun Li themed meal. An interesting choice. <laughs> Look at that, that guy. Oh, wow. That's a, that's, <laughs> wow. See, they missed so much of a chance here. Or well, why not serve chicken thighs? Oh, that kind of looks oh like crap. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that one's not too bad, I suppose. No. I mean, I knew she had thighs that were super strong, but wow, look at those. They're hard. I mean, um, look at those. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but that face. I feel like the face could have had a little bit more attention to detail. Is my mouse being it's a awful suddenly? Fierce warrior face. There we go. Yeah. 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 It's not bad. It's not, it's not the worst. For, for, it's not the for worst. A statue, it's not bad. Okay, <laughs> so Digimon celebrates 25th anniversary with colorful Digivice Revolution. To, commem to commemorate, to commemorate, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Digimon franchise, Bandai has launched a new version of the iconic Digivice toy, now with color LCD screens. Plural. The Digivice uh, 25th Color Revolution toy, mimicking uh, the design uh, from the anime's first season, is available for a hundred, sorry, eleven thousand yen, which is ninety-five Actually, US dollars. Holy oh, does. bloody right! Uh, and includes features like Pet Simulator, where fans can raise uh, and battle Digimon. The deluxe set, uh, retailing for uh, 16,500 yen, which is about 120 US dollars, offers additional items like character themed uh, digivices and an anniversary art book. Pre orders in Japan run until April 22nd, with the international uh, shipping set for November. Jeez. And but Bloody I mean, it, can't, it does look like it can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, but ninety-five dollars for an LCD. Sorry, oh, 120 for the deluxe, deluxe screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's 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 yeah. not a small ask. No, it is not. Uh, but it's it's clearly a collector's item. All right. So Code Geass's orange dream becomes reality in an unexpected turn from April Fool from an April Fool's jest to genuine product. The Code Geass themed orange juice, initially teased as a prank, is now a limited time reality from April sixth to fourteenth. So, um one week by the time this comes out uh, fans can purchase Jeremiah Farm Orange Juice for 3,000 yen or about $20 for a 180 milliliter bottle that's not very much um, this sounds tiny about uh, d- 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 at Sunrise World Tokyo and Bivy Nijo event space in Kyoto this premium price includes not just the beverage but also a choice among four, four Code Geass acrylic character stands the Juice, a collaboration with longtime sake brewer Shia- Shiaito Shuzo, showcases the franchise's commitment to engaging fans in novel ways. That's one way to put it, I suppose. That mm. is a very novel way. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I get, I get you're buying I, the novelty of it and, you know, probably keep the bottle around afterwards just- if you drink it. I just love sense. the idea. Every time that an April Fool's Day prank becomes an actual product, I, I really yeah. enjoy it. What do we have in this uh, video? Yeah, have Is there some anything oranges. actually worth seeing? No, no it's, it's, just, just, it's just orange juice. It's just, it's just orange juice. It's just orange juice. Yeah, yeah. Lots of orange juice. New releases to delight anime and manga fans. This week's North American anime and manga releases include a variety of titles for fans to enjoy. Among them, the Black Bullet Blu-ray and the Kimi Ni Tudoke From Me To You Soulmate and Bless graphic novels hit the shelves. Additionally, digital readers can look forward to titles such as Boruto, Naruto Next Generations, uh, GN19, and A Brief Moment of Each Card, GN1, among others. Uh, that's graphic novel. I just realized that's graphic novel. Uh, yeah. Among others, fans of light novels aren't left out either, with new entries like Raven of the Inner Palace, novel 5, and Trapped in a Dating Sim, Atomi Games Are Tough for Mobs, novel 1, available both in print and digitally. There you uh, go. If Plenty you want to go see to, uh... the, all the releases, the link will be in the description. Thank really? you, Nazis. Uh, I, I like that right. like becoming a regular feature. News. But we've got mm. facts and rumors! Right, before we start the facts and rumors, I just want to caveat that um, we have found that with one of the facts and rumors, um, it was tricking the intern so bad that we've had to try and teach the intern how to follow the paper trail to make sure that the source is creditable and not just some daisy chain of AI-generated bullshit. So, um, <laughs> please, again, take some of this stuff as um, with a pinch of salt. Because, but some of them I heard were just absolutely laughable, what the fuck even. But yeah, so um, we will begin with the first one of Solo Leveling is getting six seasons. <gasps> and this is rumor. Right? Oh, my God. Right. So recent reports indicate that solo leveling is potentially planned to extend over six seasons, fueled by the anime's successful debut and anticipation of adapting the Ragnarok spin-off storyline. However, these plans appear to be primarily um, preliminary. Sorry, preliminary, and are uh, primarily uh, from the Korean production side, with Japan- Japanese approval still pending. Given the speculative, sorry, given the speculative nature of these reports and the absence of official confirmation, it's advised to approach this information cautiously. So it sounds mm. like the Korean company is like, "Yeah, man, we could totally do six seasons. Come on, come on, do six seasons." And Japan's like, ah. Maybe, maybe. As I said, like when I saw that on um, what's it called the the internet, so I was just like, hey, "Fuck bullshit." Yeah, right. anyway, they never plan that far ahead on these shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My Hero Academia season seven is listed for twenty five episodes and will begin airing May fourth. This is a fact. As, as if anyone was doubtful about that one. Uh, IGN confirms that season seven of My Hero Academia is set to air on May fourth, twenty twenty four. Additionally, the episode count for the season. Uh, is confirmed to be 25 episodes, which will be divided into two cores. 
This means the season will likely be split, split into two parts, with one part consisting of 12 episodes, and the other consisting of 13. So, probably spring and fall, maybe. Um... This information comes from the from reliable sources and aligns with official announcements regarding the show's upcoming season. Uh, Zeno has a note here. I added this because My Hero Academia Memories has started, which is just a recap of the series and seems to span a few weeks. Interesting. Yeah, so I thought this was like uh, bunk to begin with because uh, I've seen uh, My Hero Academia like you know started streaming and things. I'm like. This, this this is crap. I know it started already. And then I um, investigated after I saw this was fact. And yeah, it turns out that that's memories, not um, the seventh season. I mean, with six seasons out, I suppose you, you do want to start condensing some of this stuff for new people to get into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, you know, it's it's you got to condense six seasons worth of narrative. So I imagine that they're going to do it over several weeks. Though I'm not quite sure if that 12 and 13 thing is going to be accurate, though, because that you means just run that spring to summer, spring through summer. I wouldn't be surprised because the if they did it this way, right, it's going to bleed into the the summer season anyway, right? Because they've started yeah, a point. month late, you know. Yep. So, anyway. Either way, uh, third up, Dragon Ball Super Manga will resume May 20th. This is a rumor. There's no confirmed information about the Dragon Ball Super Manga resuming on May 20th. The latest official updates in indicate the manga entered a new arc in December 2022, with serialization continuing into 2023. And this arc featured Goten and Trunks and was related to the Dragon Ball Super Superhero film. Uh, while there has been an announcement regarding the manga's continuation, no specific date uh, in May or otherwise has been officially confirmed for its resumption. Yeah, this this is um, the, the, the story the that kept issues. on. Yeah. Oh, God, the intern was just like, no, no, this this is fact, this is fact. And then I would read through the articles myself as like that it was citing. And it was just like, there, there is no confirmation. Like, it says if it's going to resume in May, it would be this date. Right, um, they would cite articles that are just like, it's no mention of a resu uh, resumption here. So, and again, they were all sort of like daisy chaining off of each other. So, yeah. you know, I yeah. mean, I get it. There's a lot of excitement for it to continue. People love Dragon Ball, but you know, you gotta, you gotta give, gotta give people a little time to to get over the a Toriyama thing and yeah, yep. figure out what they want right. to do. And because we brought it up, I think, last week, um, it's important to correct ourselves. Blue Exorcist anime returns in October with Beyond the Snow arc. And this is fact. The Blue Exorcist anime will return in October with the uh, Beyond the Snow arc. Um, arc? Yeah. Uh, this information was confirmed at the Anime Japan... Uh, 2024 event indicating uh, that the series will indeed continue with this new arc later this year the exact release date in October has not been specified when did mm. that so that was 325 that yeah that's that's fair enough um, but yeah. this is this is why you need to be, be careful with this stuff because sometimes it's a rumor until you, you have the, the official announcement mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, again, like, exactly. again, talking about the Dragon Ball Super 1, um, it was it citing articles to be May 20th, from... But you... No, it was citing articles from December, and like, well, that's yeah, before yeah, the yeah. hiatus was even announced, so, yeah, you know, cool. that's clearly got nothing to do with it, so, yeah, um, we, we, we've had to, we've had to teach our intern a few things. Cool. Right. Uh, that's well, that will do it for the news. Um, make sure you stay tuned later this week for Kampai Cast, where we have a special guest, and we're talking about uh, the mythical side of anime and and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, very much a broad discussion. And, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, discussion and, uh, on mythology and anime. Yeah, I enjoy. I enjoyed it. Uh, so that, but that will do it for this week, and we will see you all next time for more news. For more news. News. <laughs>